if I set a scale on here, level, I'm going to say over two inches, my side rake is very hard to detect. It almost is a neutral rake. Also, these tools are kept, uh, I use a sleeve in a bar. You just drill right through the center of the bar, bore them, and you can get the solid sleeve and it's threaded in the back and you have an adjusting screw. Or you can get the open type sleeve and it's got an adjusting screw. I don't really have a preference of one over the other. They used to be fairly inexpensive. And the nice thing about them is if you make small ones for a bar like this, you can saw the other end off and you have a nifty little holder uh, for your criterion type tools if you want to uh, uh, run them in a criterion tool out the side like this. And they're excellent boring tools. So that is a TSC-6. This would be a TSC-5. One's a, one's a hard carbide. It's a C5 or C6 and the other one's a C2 or C3. They also come in a TSA. TSA tool also has a lot of top rake. I hope you can see underneath that scale, but there's quite a beak on that tool. It has a little more side rake than the TSC. It's meant to work like this and bore to a straight shoulder. And it will allow a little more aggressive feed rates. You can adjust that as you grind it. These will chatter easier. So what most machinists will do Well, it's not drop their tool. What most machinists will do is when they're grinding these up on the table, instead of setting for any side rake at all back here, they'll change their table to zero or very close to zero, and they'll run for a small land, they'll run a zero rake in this aspect. And that'll give you more tool pressure, but it knocks the chatter down. You can get round tools. This would be a TRC 5, 5 16 round. And this would be a TRC uh, 8. Yeah, it's a TRC 8, half inch round. And these have, uh, the difference between these and the square ones is the carbide if this is in the middle of the bar, the carbide is a little bit closer to the center of the to the center of the bore. It's still a bit above center. And although this looks like a positive rake, this tool, I've lost my scale, this tool going back through the bar and when it's cutting presents to the hole something more of a neutral rake. It doesn't tend to pull itself in. And it doesn't tend to pull the bar forward. It doesn't grab and release. Which is one thing that is on boring with lighter bars and lighter spindles because they'll move back and forth. They'll pull in, release, pull in, and release and the chatter starts. And it is, I think it's worse than having wrong feed rates or wrong speed. The lay type tools, here's an AR and an AL, I don't much like because they have, they're really unsuitable for boring to me. But they do make great facing tools and I'll use them for facing in a boring machine. How do we set these tools? Don't pull it all the way back and let's go out a little bit. Widen it out. Well, if you're portable boring, you might be familiar with something like this. Whoop, get them out of here where you can see it. Uh, this is an old 
set and gauge from Cedar Rapids Engineering. Amco had some similar that actually clipped around the bar. Um, the divisions on this, this is divided in one thousandths, but it's a large barrel, so you can set, you can divide easily with this and work to incredibly nice uh, tolerances. You just push the tool up to it if you don't have a tool with a backing screw. Some people will set these with a mag base. Just set it down on the bar, roll it over the tool, and uh, back it out some more. Roll it over the tool, lock it down, and then adjust their tool. Some have setting gauges they put on their table and they'll just uh, uh, run an indicator out to the bar this direction. Set this guy aside. He's got a tall. I have a bit of a different solution for these bars on the boring mill. I build a gauge. It is a tenth setting gauge. It's got a flat anvil. It's a C frame. And to use this gauge, you just clamp it over the bar. It's got a spring and a locking screw. You clamp it over the bar. Find your high point in the center of your anvil. And you unlock this tool. And of course, you've got an adjusting screw down here in the bottom. And with a tenth setting gauge, you can work. Well, actually, you can work to uh, half a thousandths very easily, all things being equal. I think that that's pretty much it. You can get, in, in addition to the uh, TRA, TSAs and the TSCs, they used to have a TSE 30 degrees, they're getting harder to find. Companies like Scully Jones will sell you something like this fella, and uh, actually I want to turn that the other way. And this is uh, used more on portable boring bars or on large boring tools. It again goes into a hole through the center of a bar, and then you adjust with that screw and you use sharpening blocks to sharpen that fella. But uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of what I'm doing and how I do it. Uh, the TSAs and the TSCs are incredible tools. After you learn how to sharpen them, uh, they really do a nifty job. And they're far better than trying to do something like that's a carbide ever ready that fits in this bar <laughs> or this ever ready. These tools, an ever ready type tool, has a different grind altogether, and you're better off looking at a stock grind on an ever ready tool if you're going to and not fool with the top of the tool. People get that and they'll grind down a little bit trying to put that tool on center and give it more relief. And that's really not the way to use an ever ready tile style tool. Uh, it's better to look at the stock grind and then you just give it like a uh, uh, 10 degree clearance on the uh, back side, radius the front, and actually as it's built, as the tool is built, the clearance is already built into it. So unless you're thinning a chip, there's no reason to do anything but grind this side of the tool bit. Uh, with the welded bores, they look like they need cleaned up a little bit. You grind a chisel up like this and the bugs come right off. Of course it helps if it's clamped. But the uh, chisel will pick underneath the bug and just knock it right off. They're ready to go. And so am I. I hope this wasn't too confusing, but that's how I set this up, bore, 
and actually get chips to break on uh, uh, welded bores where they're kind of tough. It's like it's like boring T1. It doesn't like to break a chip. But if your tooling's right, you can do it. Anyway, have a good day.